uh, letting folks know that the meeting is being recorded uh, auditorily and visually. Um, There, the first on our agenda is a public comment period. And I want to say, I uh, actually really want to appreciate and thank the, um, a, a large number of people who sent in written comments in advance. Um, if we had to go through all these comments uh, vi you know, verbally at the meeting here, we wouldn't get to our agenda. So, um, Grow Food Northampton succeeding without additional pipelines, Sunrise Movement, Northampton Neighbors, Mothers Out Front, League of Women Voters, Friends of Northampton Trails, uh, two individuals, Nick Warren and Jonathan Goldman, Robert Zimmerman, um, and then um, uh, another group of four individuals who uh, put some input in on nitrous oxides. Um, uh, and so, you know, unless the commission thinks otherwise. But I'd like to move that those be submitted to the public record. Into the minutes? Included yeah. in the, including the minutes of this meeting. Okay. Do you want to make a formal vote on that, or is that just a general? It, it, it's not necessary. It's given that any any public do any document that's submitted to any committee is considered pub yep. part of the public yep. record. But just as a formality, that it's in the minutes that we ask that these be included. So okay. that was my just my thoughts as well. And if someone else wants to spend time with any one of them. Or? I just wanted to second that. Okay. Okay. Yep. So we will do that. Um, are there any public comments uh, 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 to come up, step forward right now and, and say something? I have a question. Sure. Uh, I submitted some comments a long time ago. Are those part of what you're going to make as part of the permanent record? They probably would have been part of past minutes. They weren't. Or, or they would have been recorded into the minutes. If you gave them, you know, if you gave them here verbally, then they would have gone into the minutes themselves. No, I submitted them written, written for them long. Okay, I can, I can double check. August twentieth was your deadline, and I think I got them on August twentieth. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure those got through. But, okay, but let me double check. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Can I just walk up? You can. Well, no, thank you. Yeah, go <laughs> I'm going to ask folks to keep it short yep. while, while here. Okay. Um, thank you all for convening and having this very important discussion that we're all looking forward to um, supporting you in and bearing witness. Um, I, I think it's very exciting to see the Energy and Sustainability Commission energizing in this way and taking its role so deadly serious at this dangerous and critical point in human and climatic history. Uh, I did want to mention, Chris, there are a few other um, groups who have also submitted comments. The Northampton Public Shade Tree Commission, which you know submitted their comments a while back. And then I think you'll be getting something, if you haven't already, from Friends of Northampton Trails. Yeah, you already have that. Okay. Oh, I didn't hear that. that. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to be very brief because this is where, um, this is the issue where we cede our voice to young people. And young people have come out in measure here today. So I'm going to be very brief and say simply, I want to read the headline from um, the Washington Post today, which was almost an identical headline to the front page of the New York Times, which said, in a bleak report, UN says drastic action is the only way to avoid the worst effects of climate change. And the quote is, global greenhouse gas emissions must begin falling by 7.6% each year beginning in 2020, a rate currently nowhere in sight to meet the most ambitious aims of the Paris Climate Accord, which, by the way, only calls for us um, uh, capping the temperature increase by two degrees Celsius, whereas we really need to be at 1.5 for safe habitation of our planet. So we are facing unprecedented times, and what we're asking you as a commission to do is to act in an unprecedented way. Um, it, nothing we've done before can be used as a model for how we act going forward. Nothing. Um, and so the urgency that we feel, the shaking in my voice when I think about the future that my children are going to be inheriting, um, the, uh, the actions that we must take starting now, they have to go in the plan. And that's what we're all here in unity to express urgency and a roadmap. A clear roadmap with, with timelines, metrics, and goals. We may not know what they all are. It may be cloudy. We have to do it anyway. And we have to take the job very seriously. 
So um, if folks in this room would like to support the sentiments I just expressed, please stand up. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you all, including the commissioners who stood up. That makes you so um, And I also want to acknowledge that this may require a whole other level of resource dedication that this city has never considered. And so it's going to require the mayor's cooperation, the city council's cooperation, a new look at our budget, a, a, a um, new work in every department. And we are here to say we support you in that. We have your backs in being very bold. So thank you. I can't say I no, hope to know, my name's Wave, I can't say I hope to know all the wonderful things that you're working on, but if they're along these lines, I, I'll try and learn more and get involved. They say don't sweat the small stuff, but the small stuff adds up. On one note, climate change, I believe, is not just due to human activity, but stuff beyond our control. And so. But meanwhile, we still need to act responsibly, so great. So as far as the small stuff, you know, I don't know if Northampton wants to be another example of a progressive place by maybe taking me. Two things I see that are small and absolutely ridiculous is in town, especially, gas leaf blowers. I mean, I have seen crews of four gas leaf blowers going in a mower that's twice the size of the piece of grass that they're <laughs> mowing it. I kid you not. <laughs> the scurry a two block radius. I can do this shit by hand. There's no jobs. Why not get a diverse crew of people who can... Now, it's hard for me to get a resume. I've been in the woods for a long time, but... You know, certainly I'm a great leaf breaker, and they're moving. So this leaf rearrangement thing, obsessive compulsive leaf disorder. <laughs> now, I don't know if Northampton wants to, you know, be famous for, you know, taking a stand against the most stupid ass energy consumption, air pollution, heat generating. You know, that, those are jobs we should take away and replace. That is totally unsustainable. And we're talking about the the, art of the, the environmental, the air quality in Northampton has gone bad. So that scratches that one off and a lot of things on there. The other issue, I know it's not popular. However, I, uh, and that is in a small, I, I know people cannot control personal choice, but if the personal choice is actually toxic and becomes community choice because of an urban setting, I feel that if laundry fragrances are allowed to exude all over town, yet marijuana is apparently a problem. I'm not seeing enough of it, but I've been suggested that my sensitivity to these perfumes are because of excessive marijuana, which is never a problem. I never have marijuana. So, you know, that you can't go to your neighbors without breathing that. That's absolutely horrible, and it's not sustainable. It's more flammable than actually smoking organic cigarettes. So you can't vape, which is good. I don't think it's good. And I understand smokers, but the smokers put it out and they walk on. And they put it in an ashtray, where, where is, there are places where the laundry smell never leaves. Mm. So I think that that is environmentally, you know, if people believe that they are being protected by corporations and the gain, and it's right there in the name, gain, this shit does not leave. <laughs> and it takes you weeks. You, you so that's it. I, I, Those are small you. things that could make a big difference. In, in the interest of okay. being able to hear everyone's voice, yes. let's yep. all make sure that we keep it to yeah, sorry. a, a minute or so. Yeah, sorry, you should have just said that. I had to announce the time limit, how, but how about no more than You two could have just put up a stop sign. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Because okay. I'm on no sleep. Um, and I would love to hear everyone else's comments, but I have to be somewhere. Okay. Thank you for caring you. about the environment. Thank you. Yeah, well, okay. Thank you. Very good. All right, hi. Um, I am Noah Cassis, and I'm the chair of the Northampton Mayor's, sorry, I can't talk today, Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission. Um, and these are other members of the Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission, as well as a few leaders from uh, Sunrise Northampton, which is a youth-led uh, climate advocacy group, and we have some prepared comments, which we're gonna share. Um, yeah, we also sent um, comments in an email, so you can refer back on them for more detail. Yeah, that's not right. Okay. Um, does everybody want to just introduce themselves before we go for a sec? Briefly, I'm Sarah Zina. I lead. I help lead um, some guys. Uh, I'm Eli. I'm the vice chair of the Mayor's Youth Commission. 
Oh, yeah, you want to choose yourself? Or no? Mm -hmm. oh, you don't want to choose. Okay, this is Elijah Bacall. He's a member of the Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission. Hi, Willa. Um, so, well, I'm one of the chair, um, the co leaders of Sunrise Northampton. So, these are just a few lists of our requests. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, in the spirit of the recognition that Northampton faces, you know, as we've talked about, the prospects of climate emergency, not just kind of climate change, but really a crisis that we're facing in, not even in the coming decades, but, you know, imminently, now, um, we really urge that, uh, that the Northampton Energy and Sustainability Committee uh, Commission uh, consider revising the Climate Resiliency and Regeneration Plan uh, to contain the following items. Um, so, uh, new messaging, um, revised messaging, including possibly a new name and, and generally uh, language that reflects the urgency um, and emergency of the climate crisis. Yeah. Um, you know, specifically, uh, maybe calling it an emergency um, is something that we think is important. And I also think treating it as an emergency, the plan physically by lowering the carbon neutrality pledge to 2030. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, we should really be looking at, I understand, like, uh, of course, um, limitations, but we should really be looking at what we need to do in order to survive and then um, figuring out how to make a plan that attacks that rather than figuring out what's achievable and trying to do the most achievable. Yeah. That's right. Um, and connected to that, um, specific metrics uh, and a timeline which will provide a clear map for our actions because, okay, sure, maybe we have this framework now and the people who are working it now know what they're doing, but this is a plan that's going to require decades. No one person is going to get a job. We need specific goals. Of course, they may need to be revised, but you know, it's just like what Lily's saying in the, you know, in every UN report that comes out, um, they say we need to drop by this rate. We need to drop by this much by 2030 or this much by 2050. And of course, you know, that may be hard to measure, um, but it's still something that's really important that we look at um, and try to include. Yeah. Um, Can you guys stick uh, directly to your points? You did write some in written comments. So sure. The, the commission's all seen those already. So you know, kind of stick right to your points without elaborating too much. Sure, sure. So, sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so then we also want acknowledgement of the need for increased resources in order to implement the proposed plan, such as an expansion of ener the energy office. Um, a focus on supporting frontline communities um, as we deal with the climate crisis. Um, and a pledge to include youth voices in the construction of future climate related policy in North Carolina. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Would anybody else like to make a comment? Hi. And, uh, my name is Denise Lello, and I'm here as a representative of Mothers Out Front um, and myself. Um, and I did submit these to Chris, um, so I don't know if you circulated them under the email attachment. Mother Dalton, yes. Under yes. yes. Okay, so I just wanted, um, I missed some of Lily's um, comments, so I can't speak to them. I did want to say that I don't envy you your job here, um, that um, the difficult thing, the really thorny thing, I think, is that there aren't unlimited resources and we have to figure out how to get the most um, uh, uh, regeneration, really, which I think is the main issue out of the um, efforts that we make. Um, there are programs out there that you all are aware of that we may not be aware of, but I would say that if you can do some combination of aggressive, which you've done really well, um, going after um, the resources that are out there to really draw down and focus on a couple of really uh, major impactful things. They could be um, some kind of uh, regional battery storage so we can more quickly electrify things. I know that housing stock and commercial stock is a big issue, So, um, uh, but ramping up our building code to reflect the need for more uh, zero emissions buildings. Um, I love the idea of reducing the use of things like gas, um, leaf blowers, and lawn mowers to a particular uh, time frame, possibly because of noise, um, to uh, move people in the direction. So, you know, your very difficult job is just to move behaviors and move the infrastructure. Electric school buses are another major thing. So, um, anyway, I, I do uh, want to add our voices to emphasizing regeneration because I think that it's uh, drawing down the carbon that we're emitting that's really the important thing here. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else?
Hi, my name is Ed Olmstead. I just want to briefly say um, th that I appreciate the work of the commission. Um, I want to point out that we're not just in a climate emergency crisis, we're also in uh, a war on facts and war on science. And in order to get even what we find, we need to be mindful that we, the local action we take here, we have the opportunity to talk to one another. Talk to farmers, talk to people who can implement changes, talk to everybody. So I think the local action here is extremely important at this point in time, where we can talk to people and ascertain the facts. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Hi, James Lowenthal, 181 Crescent Street. It is fantastic that Northampton has this Sustainability and uh, Energy Resource Commission. Uh, it can serve as a model. Another reason that it's important to do our, our local work here, even though we cannot solve climate change on our own, is it will serve as a model for other uh, communities around the country, around the state, around the country, and around the world. I teach climate change in my classes at Smith. Uh, we astronomers understand how the sun works, the earth works, planets, atmospheres, uh, and we teach how the energy gets from the sun to the earth and heats it up and how adding carbon dioxide makes all the difference in the world. And uh, I just a couple of weeks ago did uh, an experiment, uh, a simulation produced by MIT uh, that uh, where we divide the class up in, into a United Nations um, simulation and they had to do negotiations with each other to try to achieve the Paris goal of two degrees uh, maximum warming. And it was hard, hard work, especially given the instructions that no country, no country in the world has yet been able to achieve the three and a half percent or exceed three and a half percent reduction annually in their greenhouse gas emissions. And yet that's what we need to try to do. So they did the hard work in my class of negotiating, of negotiating with each other. Okay, we've got the money, you've got the trees, how are we gonna make this work? This is where Northampton can play a significant role. We can show that reductions are possible while keeping quality of life high, uh, standard of living high. We do not need to produce the greenhouse gases we are. We need to focus on the three uh, main problems we have of energy generation, uh, transportation, and agriculture. And we have to do them all. It's all hands on deck. Thank you for your work. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you for the trees. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to move on to, um, I would take a motion to approve the minutes from November 10th. So moved. Second. Second? Ashley? Oh. Oh, that was saying in favor. Oh, there's your pick. Okay, any, any discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Um, okay. Uh, the one other item we have on the agenda is climate resiliency and regeneration plan. I'm going to hand it over to Wayne. Okay. Thank you. So uh, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I believe the agenda started with us. Well, we we're following up from the last meeting. We broke into a work group and okay. we'd like to present. Okay. Yeah, I thought we were going to be reading our opening statement and but we forward. did a lot of work. Yep, that works. Like, uh, start there, that's right. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And in turn, we won't take 10 minutes to start with. We'll see. We'll see what it takes. Um, so what we had planned to do, as you all know, Aiden, Gordon, and I um, spent a lot of time kind of going through the plan, um, and ultimately came out of it with a proposal that I think all of you had seen. Um, what we wanted to do this afternoon was to read the opening statement. Um, we would really like to leave this meeting um, having voted on moving forward with the working groups which we um, propose in our opening statement. Um, and assuming that we decide as a commission to kind of adopt this opening statement and move forward with the working groups, um, I, I don't think there's any reason to kind of dig into the you know, following 10 pages or so of comments that we put forward. We got some really excellent and substantive comments from the public. Combined with these comments, I think if we move forward with working groups, these will all just be distributed to those groups to, to handle. Does um, everyone have to perceive that and have a chance to review it? Great. So I, I would propose that our time is best be spent tonight um, hearing this opening statement and then um, if there's discussion that needs to happen around how we form or recruit um, working groups and the timeline around those, we can do that. Um, 
and then and then ideally you would promote and um, what's your feedback? I think it's after we read the opening statement, we'll open it up to. Sound good? Sure. Okay. Um, so this is written in the voice of the commission, and, and we, we are hoping this can um, be adopted by commissioners. So. Um, the Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission recently completed a review of the city's 2019 Climate Resilience and Regeneration Plan, a planning document commissioned to provide a roadmap for Northampton's response to climate change emergency, as well as inform an update to the Sustainable Northampton Master Plan. Nest finds the CRRP document wanting in several respects. Though well-meaning, the plan lacks ambition, fails to delineate measurable outcomes, and leave several critical policy gaps. Ness therefore considers the plan as it now stands a work in progress and not ready for adoption by the city council or mayor's office. In 2018, the IPCC issued a warning that in order to limit temperature rise to one and a half degrees Celsius and to avoid the most dire consequences of climate change, net human induced carbon emissions must fall by 45% from 2010 levels by 2030. Since global emissions have continued to rise since 2010, today's emissions now need to be cut by more than half, 55%, in order to meet the 2030 target, which, I consi which we consider a minimum. In the face of widespread climate inaction at many levels of government, Ness believes that climate conscious cities like Northampton must dedicate intensive planning and commit a new level of resources in order to take steps toward preparing for and mitigating climate change. We believe Northampton possesses the public will to take such action and must do so at a pace that serves as a model for what is possible. This call for action is not intended to burden the city, but is an opportunity to demonstrate both local and global leadership in building a thrival, thriving post-carbon economy and community. We recommend that we take this opportunity to prove that decarbonization is achievable in mid-sized cities and across socioeconomic strata. This is an opportunity to assert a legacy Northampton can be proud of and one that reflects the values and creativity of this city's population. Nest review of the, of the plan below includes detailed comments, recommendations, and suggested language insertions aimed at bolstering the document's scope and efficacy. However, we believe as a commission that the incorporation of these comments alone is insufficient. As the body responsible for advising and assisting the city in identifying, developing, implementing, and managing programs and policies that combat climate change, NESC recommends against the CRP's adoption and instead recommends our commission form a series of working groups to add, rework, and enhance several key pathways for action in the plan before it advances to city council. The form, function, and timeline of the envisaged working groups is detailed below. So we're proposing working groups on energy transition, urban farms and forests, waste, and transportation and mobility. The commission believes that equity should be incorporated as an integral and natural component of each pathway for action and not segregated as its own other pathway to action. The roles of the working groups would be as follows. Research best practices from other cities' climate plans and activities recommend specific actions, targets, and metrics for achieving the city's climate mitigation and resilience goals and for measuring progress against them. Solicit feedback and input proposed actions, targets, and metrics from relevant city departments, including the Energy Office. And finally, deliver comprehensive recommendations to NESC for review and ultimately submission to the Planning Office. Once recommendations are sufficiently incorporated, the enhanced plan will be advanced to the City Council for adoption. In terms of the composition of the working groups and recruitment, we propose that each working group be overseen by one or more NEST commissioners. Working groups will comprise a minimum of three members and a maximum of seven, all of whom are recruited on a volunteer basis. Any citizen of Northampton or city employee is eligible to be a member of a working group. The opportunity to volunteer for a working group will be advertised through media coverage in the Gazette, through social media, and through direct outreach to target expert participants. This timeline will need to be updated based on um, this delayed meeting, um, but we had proposed forming the working groups during the week of, between November 15th and 25th. 
The working groups would return recommendations to NEST January 31st, 2020. NEST would vote to submit recommendations to the planning office on February 13th, 2020. And NEST reviews planning offices and corporations of recommendations on March 12th before it advances to the city council. So I will just um, close by saying and sort of echoing some of the sentiments of the Youth Commission that, you know, I think it is far, far better that we fail at trying to do something really aggressive and really ambitious than we wake up in 2030 or in 2050 realizing we hadn't tried hard enough. So I think the uh, the intention is to open things up. I have a statement that I would like to read uh, and open things up for other commissioners to share their input on this plan before we hear back from the city. Uh, it is my opinion that in order to address climate change, we must be significantly more aggressive in our efforts to reach net zero than this plan outlays for us. 2050 is a goal that will naturally be met because of emerging technology. It will require no effort whatsoever on our part to hit it. Therefore, we must stretch our desired goal if we are going to actually achieve anything mean meaningful with our work. Science has showed that if we do not significantly change what we are doing by 2030, we will cause irreparable harm to our environment, which we cannot afford to ever repair. It is my desire to move this commission to a goal of 2030 for net zero for this city in any building that we have control over. We cannot necessarily take control over our citizens in the next 12 years but we have full control over ourselves. That goal of 2030 has furthermore been echoed in the statements that we heard today and the statements that were submitted. And I will read from the Sunrise Movement. In order to protect our futures, carbon neutrality by 2050 is not enough. And we must convey that to the mayor. Carbon neutrality, the Sunrise movement continues by 2030 must be on a global level which means that when equity developing countries are taken into account highly developed places like Northampton must cut carbon emissions even more mm -hmm. yeah. mothers out front says while 2050 goal for 100% carbon neutrality is laudable, the city can and must move faster. Succeeding without additional pipeline says, at this critical moment in human and climatic history, when dramatic reduction of global greenhouse gases over the next 10 years will determine whether or not we avoid catastrophic and irreversible tipping points for climate change, that right there, that right there sets our goal. It is the next 10 years in which we must make this change happen. And I personally can support no plan unless it states that. That's all. Three of you, actually anything else? Open up the commission. Just wanna remind us um, that our intention is for us as a body to vote on this document that we worked on. Um, I just want to acknowledge that Ashley's leadership in this. She met that deadline at her last meeting that unfortunately got postponed. Uh, but totally went above and beyond us and stepped right up uh, to hammer this out. So we really, our intention is that as a body we vote on this statement and then we proceed to form working groups. Maybe out of the exact kind of context and needs of the existing plan, it might go beyond the existing uh, city council. Um, you know, they put a lot of work into this. But the importance of us getting this done 
uh, requires this body to step up like we haven't in the last five, seven years that I've been involved and form more groups and actually put time in. So that's that's what I'm hoping to do in an hour is, is adopt this. So, so what I'd like to do is go through what I took as sort of your comments and other comments we received and try to identify sort of decision points, I think, for the commission because I think there's lots of things we sort of need to go through in the process. I don't disagree with almost anything that I've heard today, um, I, but I sort of think it's important to sort of think about all, all these things in, in context of uh, doing it. So I have like a nine slides, I'm just go through this quickly in the process. Um, we can give you five minutes. Before, before, you, before you do that, can I just, just put it this way? Um, so as you go through this, just you know, to honor what they're, they're asking for, just to kind of say, set for the agenda, we're gonna go through this and then I think we probably should make a motion to approve this, mm -hmm. and then under discussion, discuss it. So I, I, I just, as a matter of procedure, I, I am a little worried about setting up a meeting that's not a public meeting that's driving the agenda. The point is to have conversations here. So I think this is great to head off the piece, but I think we need to fit in the context because we you know, need fair plan that goes forward. There's some inaccuracies in this process that aren't major, but it's worth sort of setting the, the making sure we go through that until we figure out what the decision points are for you. Just, a, very, just yeah. a pure process question. So you're bringing up the idea that these working groups would be violating something of our responsibilities about open meetings law and that sort of thing. It's, 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 it's actually, that would have been my major concern that this be vetted by the solicitor on some level because yes, when you are a deliberative body that's making decisions or recommendations for a municipal body, there are open meeting laws that are required. So, I mean, it's not insurmountable, but as the structure's laid out here, it's complicated. So, I mean, I think we can, I think that's doable. It's not dissimilar to the process. Uh, one way you could do it, it's not dissimilar to the process that Wayne's done for the last year and a half, almost two years, yeah, which we is- We don't have that kind of time. No, no, yeah. I, I'm not talking about timeline. I'm talking about essentially conducting fora, which are open to the public to participate. Um, and but as such, they're not they're where you can generate the ideas and the, and the concepts, and those can be advanced, and that would work. That would work at, at, under open meeting law. But that sorry. if we only have one or two commissioners per working group, it's, then yeah, no, that's not the violation. That's not the problem. Actually, the 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 um, this is whether this body is empowered to create a number of subcommittees, essentially, that would be comprised <laughs> of at least one commissioner um, and thereby serve. I mean, I, I'm not entirely clear on the rules, so that's why I'm, I'm just I'm just red flagging because I'm not sure. Okay, I, mean, I we thought can, there was we, another commission that had Yeah, I mean, groups. the commission alternately, something to consider is uh, the council or the mayor can also set up subcommittees and, uh, you know, an ad hoc committee that would do with it. If you voted to this one issue, with just uh, 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 Councilor Klein has participated in a blitz process for the pesticide management in the city that was an ad hoc committee that was set up exclusively and expressly for the purpose of that. But it needs that uh, imprimatur, it needs that some, some kind of, this body does not have the authority to create subcommittees. But just to be clear, the, the intention would be that those work groups, not subcommittees, would be would be bringing information back to this body. Right. That then we would be basically restructuring. It's the recommended body. It's, it's, so I, it's, and that's possible, Aiden. I don't know for sure. It, it is. I'm just, it, my principal concern is abiding by all the the, the tenets of open meeting law, so that we're not that you don't get hung up in validating whatever the good work is by someone, for instance, challenging the open meeting law process. So, so the reason I set this up here is I just want to go through the decision point so it's not an up or down. I mean, you know, we sort of we started discussing this at the last meeting. We said let's put it off to hear from this subcommittee ad hoc group, whatever it is. But I, I, I don't want to just sort of ups and downs without people figuring out decision points. I don't really care what the outcome is, but I do care about having a reformed commission to figure out the issues. Well, so and I think that we all really appreciate the participation of your office with this commission. Uh, I think that it's very important that we uh, 
give everyone in the room the opportunity to have their voice heard. And at the last meeting, you consumed the vast majority of them. So I'm trying to so, now go through the comments, though, which I haven't had the opportunity to go through. That was the whole point of reading all this time. We just need to be very limited in the amount of time that is available to you so that we as a committee can actually function because we need time to determine how we move Agreed. I'll, I'll, I'll go through this quickly. Yeah, we're, we're not getting into the details yeah. of what we Absolutely. Wrote, and we no, also I, incorporated the That's what I'm trying to identify. Trying to stay key, high level. Right. That's what I'm trying to identify this sort of key decision. Right. I, mean, I think part of what you all agree is, I, I suspect at least in this room, we all agree there's a climate emergency. We all agree we have to move forward. I think. You know, we're two years into this process. We're two months into getting detailed comments from this commission. And so we're trying to figure out how do we, what's the most effective way to move forward. And so, so I think I have nine slides, 10 slides. So I'll go through it quickly. So the first question is, what's the purpose of the plan? I, I don't think the commission as a whole has sort of identified it. The original plan was to create a strategic plan that would then be a guide a more comprehensive, sustainable plan. If we're changing that, that's fine, I don't object. But that's sort of discussion about how deep in the weeds do we get. So that's the first what, you know, what do we want to, what do we want to achieve here? Um, the second one is in terms of timeline. Um, just so you know, this is sort of a, a minor detail in terms of um, the recommendation, but this is sort of the legal process. So you know, we hired a consultant who did a series of stakeholder forums, community forums, and one that was very important to us was uh, procedural equity, so not just representing frontline communities, but involving them in the process. I think the one thing you, that has made me nervous about this process is, do we leave that out? If people who show up in meetings are the people who self-select, then we're violating the procedural equity that we're trying to do. Um, the legal process for this is, again, depends on what kind of plan we want, but if, it's, if it's, it becomes a legal document, this committee makes recommendations, Planning board legally adopts after a public hearing, and then city council will usually ask for recommendations to endorse the process. Again, we don't have to do that, but it's but that's sort of been the steps. Is it becomes part of the comprehensive plan. That has some teeth to it for the regulatory process. Compliance with a comprehensive plan is one of the conditions for anybody going for a certain kind of permits. So it's desirable to go through the process. Again, you can do plans that cover different kinds of, of things. Um, the third one here is, um, you know, this whole strength of assets. I mean, what I found really interesting with your comments, I totally agree that we should be striving for city buildings being carbon neutral by 2030. I'm not 100% sure we're going to achieve it, but at least that's a different thing than citywide being carbon neutral by 2030. Um, but we need to have an honest conversation about stranded assets. Are we willing to abandon lots of boilers and those kinds of things? And I think that's a, a deeper conversation in the process. Yeah. Um, how aggressive? Oh, sorry, um, how aggressive do we want to be in terms of greenhouse gas emissions? And I'm fine with being most aggressive possible. I just want to make sure that as you give this presentation, that every commissioner is comfortable asking you questions about each slide you're going. Yeah, through. you want to so go? You want to go back? So no, I'd like it to happen as we. That's fine because it, that way it's a conversation. Yeah, that's fine. Which is what I like to. All right, so let me go back to this one. So any comments here in terms of what's the purpose of the plan? Well, yeah, what is the purpose of the plan? Well, you, you laid out some options. So this, uh, it's, I'm not clear how this is going to fit in the sustainable and organic plan. And it sounds like the process that this is becoming is bigger than that. It's really about restructuring resources in the city. So how do you see that taking that role? You know, being incorporated in the sustainable and organic plan, having T for development permits, but how do we get the yeah. city to consider restructuring resources. And it's funny, I mean, I think we argue for the same thing. You know, if we all think it's climate emergency, what's the fastest process for? So I think the subcommittees and, and, and Sunrise is arguing for having a more complete plan that addresses all these things, which doesn't, I don't mind that at all, but I think it just means longer before we do things. You know, I, I'm a strong advocate for creating climate budgets for every department to figure out for each department to start having to track how do they get to carbon neutral. Um, I'm a strong advocate for lots of different steps to worry about putting those things off. Do you view this as stopping I do. city from proceeding? I do, because we don't because we don't build consensus. That's what adopted plans give us. Well, we're here to build consensus. Right, but it's a slower process we're doing. Um, and, I, and I guess I'd rather have a plan, I mean, typically it's on one of the later slides, but 
typically do a big plan and then come back and do a work plan. So this committee, for example, we did sustainable under Hampton, then this committee went through every single recommendation of the plan and said, here's what's the work program for this committee. But if the alternative is to just give you the power to plan as you wish, no, it's not what we're seeing your plan, and this group of people out here disagrees with it. But just be clear, this isn't my plan. This is a consultant. We invited you all to participate. But aren't you and asking? The point us? of the plan was to get its involvement, and then we'd come back. We don't, we don't think it's a complete plan. It's, it's This is a work in progress. I don't disagree with that part at all. You're saying that it's getting in the way of you progressing with the city's goals. No, it's getting in the way of you all progressing. The city has not yet had a policy for capital improvements requests that say the first we should be measuring capital improvements requests based on climate change. It hasn't yet directed department heads in preparing their FY21 budgets to the carbon budget. Um, it hasn't done a lot of things, and it's probably not going to do until we- You're seeing this as being the director for that. I think it, it certainly helps in the process. I mean, you know, ultimately the mayor and city council have to agree to those steps, and so they could disagree, but it's a consensus building process. But if this, is, if this is so important that you're going to steer the entire city based upon this, then don't you think it's worth the time that we put into it now? I don't think one excludes the other. I think getting a process going forward is great. But, you know, and part of the process, I don't think, I don't think your timeline is realistic for community conversations, consensus business. And so I worry about how long this is a realistic timeline. Oh, Alisa, did you have something to say? Yeah, I, this whole kind of tension around what is the resilience plan versus the uh, sustainable and recanting plan, but you know, new plan for the next however many years. Um, I don't think it matters anymore. To me, I mean, I appreciate how much got sunk into the resilience plan up till now. I really appreciate that this group, this subcommittee, um, did the work that they did. I think it's incredibly um, crucial to our movement forward. But to me, we're at the point where we need a plan that is steps put in place to reduce to zero by 2030. It doesn't matter what we call it. It doesn't matter if it's the resilience plan. It doesn't matter if it's the Northampton sustainable plan. Whatever plan we create in the next, I'd say, 12 months needs to be the, the roadmap for us to achieve carbon neutrality by 2030, period. So I think we need to get off, you know, completing the, the resilience plan and um, where does it fit into the, the Northampton, the sustainable plan. We need a roadmap, period. And I think that we're getting given a roadmap to create that roadmap that we really need to be listening to. I think there are lots and lots of elements in the resilience plan as it stands now that can be folded into that. I don't think it's you know something we, we we're not throwing out the babies with the bathwater, but we need to create that roadmap like now. So that's that's what I would say. Let me show two slides for this conversation. So I, I won't go through all these things, but I mean to me what I did in the summary slide here is just what are the things that I, you know, that climate emergency piece I think we should be working on immediately. And and frankly, I think these are sort of the in, in some ways the big game changers. And I'm not convinced that we need either metrics or detailed working groups to start doing this. And so in some ways, I mean, maybe it's both. Maybe we're adopting a plan now as an executive summary so we can start implementing it, and then we can fill the meat out later. Because again, I don't, I don't object to the working groups at all. I object to not moving forward on the things that I think are critically important. So that's sort of one thing is, what are the, what are the, what's the, I wouldn't say low-hanging fruit because they're enormous tasks. But what are the things that, that we should be moving on media? So that, that's the one slide. And then the other slide here that's important to talk about, this was sort of just the details to the working groups. When we look back at greenhouse gas generators and we look at what are all the steps we need to do, the reality is some things like, you know, we all want to reduce waste. And if you're in the ocean, it's a huge effect on, on you know, animals, marine animals. But the reality is that it's a minuscule, I think it's 3% of our carbon footprint. Whereas you, there wasn't a working group at land use and about the people who people who drive, whether it's electric vehicles or driving at a single occupancy gas powered vehicle, is going to have an enormous impact. And so the working groups aren't necessarily going to deal with going forward in some of these things. So that, that's why I sort of think we need to focus on the, the last slide about the action plan. What are the things we should be starting on tomorrow? 
And then in a more detailed look, we need to think about all five of these. Maybe there's different ways to cut, but they should be data driven. Can we go back to the last Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I just have a question. So if this is about getting on, which I'm all in favor of, because we don't have much time, and the timeline you guys laid out was really rapid for, for that reason, but also kind of difficult. If the problem is open meeting and things we can do right now, and what I'm interested in is let's outline some concrete steps that the city can commit to, maybe with the public and with the expertise that we have here. We have a fair amount of expertise sitting right here. We can start to outline actual steps that we can do, and we can vote to modify this to say add 2030, not 2050, and we can probably with this, with this within this group find certain metrics that we actually can agree on here and like quickly. Does that get us on the path that we need to get on without the diversion to the working groups, which I get the reason for, but if that's going to be a problem, is there a way that we can kind of work them and, into the And what is the rule of yeah. brain power? The goal was to source brain power from this room, actually. And right, from so what if we brought them in right. and our meetings? Excuse me. Yeah. Um, we're here and we can't hear a thing. Can you okay. So that we can okay. Hear sure, you? we can yeah. try to speak. Yeah, yeah. That's really nice. yep. Thank you. There, there are also some seats up front. Yeah, and there are a few seats up front if you'd like okay, to scooch forward. It's, so. it's getting quieter and quieter. I, I apologize. Sure. Okay. The, so the basic story is we need some brain power and we need to have an open meeting and we need not necessarily, as you're saying, to revise the plan in detail you know, through this long process. So I guess I'm asking the question, is it possible to do it within the context of this commission's meetings to, to get the metrics, the goals, um, and the concrete steps to read on kind of within this process? Just, well, if I could, uh, pardon me for a moment, but just to remind people what the structure is actually, how this actually, is, anything gets implemented. And it's going to be frustrating as hell. But the fact is, essentially, <clears throat> any directives essentially come with the final decision of the mayor. Council creates law. We don't create, create policy. We can go deep in the weeds about that discussion, too. But, for instance, and I'll use the pesticide working group, for instance, as a good example. Um, so what they did, and they were concentrated in one area, and it was still a, a, an enormous effort, but it took the group meeting, discussing, analyzing, and deconstructing, and, and, and presenting, and this is on a much more rapid timeline than we're used to, to be honest, because we're getting to the end of the session, but then there was an ordinance that was proposed. It was actually much, uh, I think Councilor Klein would agree, that it, it was much less than what they were originally hoping, but at least it was a step forward. But the frustration comes from that. But so structurally, what we say here and what we craft here is serves as a recommendation to the administrator, uh, the mayor, and to the council ultimately too. But the mayor has the ultimate authority as, as it relates to departmental stuff, things that have to do with all the buildings and all the structure and how we how we invest our funds in that respect. The council can vote on budgetary issues, and that is also a tool by which we can do this. It is, so when we consider these things, because, and we do always have to keep in mind the separation of public versus municipal. That's kind of important because, uh, we, you know, if we're going to create a law that bans leaf blowers, uh, gas powered leaf blowers, that's actually a law that has to come as a law. Uh, if the, if eventually, if, if the DPW decides to go to battery powered leaf blowers, that's an interpolitan, interdepartmental policy decision that the mayor signs off on. So just, I'm just. So what you're saying, so I've got this. What we can do is make a recommendation. Absolutely, yes. And the more detailed our recommendations, possibly, the better. And then you can carve them out into, these ones are appropriate as ordinances, let's propose, let's recommend exactly. them to the city council. Exactly. And these ones are policy, and let's recommend those. But since our only power is to make recommendations, let's quickly and aggressively make recommendations. I think <laughs> what we found was that it takes a lot of brain power to make detailed recommendations on a plan that is this thick. And so what we were hoping to do was to, to do exactly that. 
and we were hoping that by breaking it off into smaller working groups that we could burrow in so that we can make detailed recommendations maybe to the that's planning the department. Maybe that's the recommendation to the mayor with specific language. We've got some specifics that need to get worked on. Like, here's our goals. Those don't require a whole lot of deep working. We kind of all agree. So let's recommend that to the mayor so that the mayor can say, okay, I am going to appoint, tell me when I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm going to appoint a working group to address this recommendation. And very likely you're on, <laughs> on that working group because you were active on it. And then we bring in that brain power, but now that working group already is speaking to the mayor about policy. And those ideas can be implemented, I would assume, more quickly than if we spend the time preparing it for this committee, which is only capable of making a recommendation. Yeah, I think if we really want to jump on these things, it's outside of this planning process that we're going through. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, how do we identify half a dozen of those or all of them and get the mayor involved and council involved? What is the fastest way to make change? And we can go ahead with a maybe extended uh, time frame. I guess that, that's my point of why not do a plan that's sort of an outline of a clear vision for where we agree and then do working groups that flesh it out. So, you know, Chris and I have been on this community choice aggregation committee for a year and a half. It's sort of, you know, we have a $78,000 grant that's fleshing it out. So, I mean, to me, that's a good example. A plan should say, we want to be an aggressive community choice aggregation. That's all the plan needs to say. And then we do a working group that says, what exactly does this mean? What consulting work do we have? What community volunteers do we need as partners for doing it? But I don't think we want to have a whole plan wait for the flash. But the challenge is the, the structure in here isn't nearly good enough as presented. So that's what we did. We stepped back with those 10 pages that we added where yeah. we advised things. And we're saying, we don't have enough uh, information, the three of us, to really flesh out. So let's bring more people in. Let's bring more brain power. But maybe in the meantime, you did have enough information to set the goals to say this was insufficiently aggressive. Sure. So isn't that enough for this plan that gets recommended? What is this plan? This plan because whatever this is that's modified. Specific targets yeah, as modified by what you guys, because yeah. I agree with almost everything. We're, right. we're not done. I think that what, we, what we're really saying is that we need like a few more months and we need more brain power on it. And if it can't be, we need we need a few more months, frankly. We have not had the chance to discuss it in this group, but this once, uh, even though it was the topic at the last meeting, there was very limited discussion amongst us as to what the right way to go forward was. And I, I'm hearing good ideas from every direction, so I think that we're making progress on it. I think that what what we were saying is that we are most certainly not ready to recommend this plan move forward in its current state. So how do we assemble the proper recommendations? Wayne had expressed to me uh, that it would be most convenient and useful to the city to have specific language recommendations for each section that his staff would be able to integrate. And then we can turn it over to Wayne to execute. I think he does a good job with that. I'm sure he does. So, so yeah. as an issue, we'll bring it to the public. I mean, maybe if we take what Ben's saying and we just make it our group, yeah. we'll, we'll work on it in a month. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean like, I, I agree with whoever said it. The, the detailed language you guys did was this, the, I thought it was great. I mean, that, you know, we could quibble about details, but I thought mostly it was great. Well, we need to discuss the details, and when we, this is the form to do that. Right, right. And I think that's the part, so how do we do it here? I mean, you know, Bill's comment about, you know, in essence, the successful plans are ones that are consensus building, so we're not just making a recommendation that ultimately council doesn't approve, or ultimately the mayor doesn't approve, or ultimately the planning board doesn't approve. So how do we do something that builds up? And that's why I think it takes longer than, than doing the process. Um, and so that's why I think sort of, I mean, I don't object to working groups and this level. And I think in some ways what's important is, and we can cut out, and stuff that's not good you can cut out. Again, I'm not, it was consultant the plan. I'm not trying to defend any of the plan. I think what's probably useful to do is cut out the parts of the plan that aren't useful, figure out the high level areas where we're going that reach an agreement, adopt that plan, and then work on working groups over whatever the time period yeah. is that builds the consensus that flushes that. It's not the working groups I object to. It's sort of, it, it's the, there's a certain randomness some of the working groups are areas that aren't going to make a huge change, make difference in change in dial, and some gaps are there. 
the concept, absolutely. The CCA. Well, I mean, that, that's the sort of debate or discussion we wanted to have this evening. I mean, we yeah. just put forward a few working groups, but that's, I think, what this group could agree on. What should the working groups be? What should be the structure? Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, to be clear, 90% of what you guys said, I totally agree with. I mean, I think we should, I mean, to me, it's we should move forward and plan to create a framework that we can get adopted framework going forward. It's useful for us as we look for grants. It's useful for us as we require permit conditions. It's useful for lots of things. And then while that's going on, do working groups. It, it, I don't want to, it should be one or the other. We should be moving forward and plan the framework. We should be a working group that flesh it out. We can always revise the plan or do it as a supplemental plan. I keep hearing you say adopt. I, I, I'm, I'm going to defer to Council Klein first, and then I have a question as well. So. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to shake things up a little bit by making a suggestion that will probably upset my colleague here to my right on the council. Um, you can take it back. And no, possibly no, others. But one of the things that Bill kind of alluded to is the difference between policy and legislation. I am of the belief that um, legislators pass legislation that becomes policy for a city. The city then is in the position of having to figure out how to, how to implement, how to carry it out. So kind of talking off the top of my head here, what if we were to uh, Wayne, you refer to these high-level ideas. What if we were to take these high-level ideals and figure out how we codify them, and then we have the staff and committees in place and this commission in place to figure out how to implement them? So what if we were to do something like have counselors propose, and I'm not even going to be on the council to do this in the next term, but um, say that Northampton will meet um, a zero carbon uh, goal by 2030, and that becomes legislation. And then it's up to the departments of the city, and it's up to committees and commissions to figure out what that looks like. Or what if we created something like a tiered timeline of, of legislation, so that by 2030 we would tackle these two pieces of that pie, um, by 2040, we would tackle these others, and not not that you would do one and finish it and then go on to the others, but that you have almost like a Gantt chart, if people know what that is, so that you're doing things sometimes overlapping at times. Um, but using legislation as the tool to actually spur and ensure that we will meet certain goals, because I think if we're we're dependent on committees and commissions. To like look into things and figure them out and da 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 da. We don't. At the same time, we're trying to figure out the ultimate goal. And sometimes, if you have that ultimate goal in place, it's kind of the bar that you're working towards. So I'm wondering if there's any appetite in the city to do something along those lines, legislatively. Um, the only the, the only problem I've heard, well, there's a few problems. One. The timeline would probably not satisfy anyone because we have to start a whole new term, introduce that, it'll take a while. But that's okay, we could, we could do that. But the, when you create, for instance, uh, carbon neutral by 2030, if you don't meet those goals, you're in violation of the law that you just made. The, the other thing is that by what metric? And that's the tricky part. And that because we, we speak with this universality like there's a common understanding about what that means, what carbon neutrality means, how we measure here in this little tiny universe. Um, you'd have to embed that in the law. I mean, it's not it's not impossible, but I but this brings me to my question, which was, what is your the the concern here about adopting the plan? Is it something? Are you concerned that it's irreversible and thereby it becomes the memorialized? doctrine of the city, because essentially what plans are like <coughs> these, and I admit it's laborious and it does, it's emotionally unsatisfying, if not practically unsatisfying, but it's moving, we're moving forward, and I, and I described this with the Youth Commission when I was discussing it, we basically, we are doing, we're, we're picking out a destination as to where we want to go, this is the roadmap uh, metaphor. 
the details about how we're going to get there, where we're going to go, how we're going to feed ourselves, how we're going to, how, what mode of transportation, all that stuff we work on because right now we're trying to do a cultural shift. In this room, no problem persuading anyone on, on these objectives here. But you're all experiencing right now a political dilemma. And this is the political problem. This is why we're put on this body because we're supposedly the political heads here. So we need the, I mean, we've always said this, there needs to be a cultural shift. And in the process of that cultural shift, once we identify this plan, as weak as you may feel it is, actually is at least we go forward that that point is a reference point for all that future legislation, all future policy decisions relative to, you know, this is the Wayne's point, no departments have been directed so far as the uh, uh, carbon goals. This starts that. He doesn't make it irreversible. It's then these things are not mutually exclusive because what you're talking about actually is exactly, and I'm excited because this is the kind of energy we've been waiting for, we've been discussing for, for multiple years now since the establishment of this commission was to try to get this level of engagement and participation by this body. And I and I know and I don't want to talk for Wayne, but I know that Wayne's experiencing some frustration because it's the kind of energy he was trying to get drummed up for the participation in the development of this plan to begin with. And it was in, in, in no no offense, but it was the usual suspects, right? Every one of you folks participated, I'm pretty we sure. We weren't in the fixed stakeholder meetings. We weren't in the early meetings. Right, no, in those meetings, in, but the frontline communities, for instance, that was a different discussion. And by the way, that's another point I want to hit on here is to emphasize that we do tend to gloss over what that means. And that's a particular concern for me about the, the impact on frontline communities. But that said, what is, what is your concern about this plan as it stands or as Wayne's new modifications, which I've yet to see, um, that supposedly took in, uh, incorporated your suggestions? What is your objection to so that moving forward? It's, it's not a framework. Like, I'll give one example. Like, there's one action recommendation of a mandatory energy disclosure policy for buildings of 50,000 square feet or larger, but maybe in the future consider smaller buildings. That is a very specific recommendation that's seeking to address the problem with our real estate market, that we're not going to fix buildings if our real estate market is what it is. So as the comments that we included, change the name of that, and you know, make it a framework, and then here's half a dozen specific policy right. recommendations. So it's just not a framework. It's not something you can say, follow this guideline. Here's an outline, it branches down. It's, it's very specific, it's broad, things aren't aligned. It's not, and then, so the whole like setting the goals in the beginning, which we can all edit and you know, like you're saying, that this vague, what is carbon neutral? How do we define that? We can get into that and have a great introduction, but then it still has to be a functional framework document. And it's not that. And that's kind of what we're saying. That's why we were shocked. So are you yeah. concerned that this would lock us into no. some Just by saying no. this is the guiding thing that we're working under, there's just so no, much. No, I understand what you guys no. want. What I'm saying, what I'm asking is, are you feeling that this document, uh, as it's massaged and moves forward, hopefully moves forward, is it painting us into a corner that we can't get out of? No. Let me just read from a specific section that I commented on, and I submitted these. Uh, on pathway three, page 42, which is titled Energy Efficiency and Conservation. It talks about nothing except benchmarking. What use is a plan? I mean, what use is this? This is our pathway to energy efficiency and conservation. And it says nothing about energy conservation or, or efficiency within the entire section. And so, this entire document is riddled with sections with a title that has nothing to do with the language beneath the title. Riddled. Riddled. And so this is currently useless. Useless. We want to make this useful I, to indirecting everyone. No, I, and I understand, and I definitely understand that. I don't think, there's, I don't think you'll find an objection to the, any, that intent or anything else. What I'm saying is right now, um, on one hand, we talk about the urgency. At the same time, we're talking about a process that actually I, I think the timeline is ambitious. I don't, I don't, 
I don't want to sound too pessimistic, but I don't think uh, it can do what, what you guys have stated that you want it to do. What I personally want, I want that cultural shift. I want a message sent to the policy makers that we are going to start implementing, you know, let's do the low hanging fruit. Let's do that right away. To your point, those things, all those things need to be developed, massaged, and, and solidified and codified if need be. But in the meantime, and I, you know, I'm glad that we're having this conversation with this much energy, no pun intended, but I really wish it were sooner, but okay, that's a regret. That's all we've got. And that's, that's on me as well, as well as everyone else has been part of this. So I, I, I'm just, I think that if we can move forward with something, something soon, something that the mayor can have in his hand, something the council can refer to and discuss and debate, which also expands the cultural discussion, embed in policy decisions at least an awareness that might not currently exist on the pressures here. And that goes to my major point, what I would edit in this is actually what the Youth Commission recommended right out of the start, was the language of urgency and emergency. The, the, to reduce the passivity in the language and to actually emphasize the community's commitment and 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 dire sense of urgency. And what could the city's commitment be to Hang on, Glenn, turn no, this around that. for us? What could what could the city Wayne, what can the city do to to incorporate all of these comments and get a new version back to us that does exactly that? That changes this language to make it more urgent. Can you commit the city's resources to making this happen? Because we can't do it as a committee unless we have a lot of time. So I think that's why the conversation. We want to figure out what's the consensus we want to go for. I and mean, the actual drafting is easy, but I don't want to go through that process. I mean, we need to figure out what we all want first, uh, and then we can. My, so I, you've asked a couple times what our concern is with passing right, right. this plan or a plan with some edits to it, and I guess. I think it's absolutely essential that the whole like vision and level of ambition and the tone of the plan changes dramatically before it's passed because once we have something out in the public domain and then suddenly change it into something significantly more aggressive, there's going to be pushback and there's going to be challenges. You've also said that technically we can change the plan, but it's way easier to change a plan before it's adopted than to try to pass addendums or repass a plan. I just fear that there'll be this kind of status quo syndrome or momentum that makes it, in practice, difficult to replace a past plan with a new one when we finally get around to it. That's, and that's, that was what I thought you were concerned for principally. And, and I think, as such, this does not, this plan does not carry the weight of law. It's not carry it is merely as we said it's a recommendation um it is a guidepost if you will it's not an, an, an imperfect guidepost yeah, but we're saying that we, we don't like it so we no i i, I picked up on that <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 but like so where i can't in good conscience pass something that i completely but, don't but agree so, with so when I, as, as, as everyone's kind of said, we all kind of agree on this kind of level of urgency and some of the deficiencies in the plan. And I think what you're trying to get at is that it may not be doing what you think it's doing. And then the problems that you have with it are not actually functional. In other words, the plan itself, we just need to get language that expresses the urgency, that expresses the timeline, and, t and touches on the areas that need to be addressed. And it sounds like specificity is not, to tell me what I'm wrong here, specificity is not important for this plan, but that we need according to, to so well, according For the specificity to actually, it, it's an introduction to the need for specificity. It is, we are not gonna holistically define the agenda to achieve the goals that are laid out in this meeting, or even in workshop meetings, in the course of a matter of months, and in in as such, but the fact is that the, the 
the battle's engaged, the conversation is engaged. Emphasizing over and over again with the with the mayor, which it's not gonna take a that's not a heavy lift persuasion thing, but the fact is that we're we're going to recommend I as I said, I think it's more important to express the urgency change the language as you described, I think the language, and that's actually an easy massage. So, um, so can I follow through on what I think Ben and Bill are saying and see, so here's I think the decision point for the committee. There's sort of two ways forward. One is boil us down to vision and framework um, and leave out all the details. Um, get a plan forward that does have the, the strength of law actually for planning board special permits, mm -hmm. otherwise it's just a recommendation move forward on that and then do a study you know do a working groups and, and sort of flesh out the rest of the either separate document or whatever later or wait and do one more comprehensive document i mean i think everyone's agreeing that the current plan is neither fish or fowl right we don't we don't know which it's in so i think and i think that's the decision point for the committee okay, okay. So i don't agree on paradigm well, I, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, i just no, i don't want to say on one thing he said so it sounds like i'm just i'm still at this point of like what is this plan and where is it relevant? Where does it cause guidance that you can't get out of or that sticks us? And where is it just like a thing in the background and we can recommend something really good? And so when you said it provides the force of law for special permits, that's the only thing you said in this list of things this plan does that has a real kind of like immediate impact. Am I wrong about that? No, but I don't want to understand. I mean, sustainable in Hampton has had enormous things coming out of it, even though the same things through there. No, I'm not trying to denigrate it. I'm just talking about like, what's the critical thing that's gonna cause us a problem if we get it wrong? And what's the stuff that can just be airy-fairy right. vision stuff that lets us then get into the, get into the details and recommend it's a very specific. It's not just a framework. It can be broad and vague, as long as it's a proper framework. Except for this special permits thing. That's no, what I wanna find none out. None of us are complaining about it being broad and vague. We're complaining about it being inaccurate and incomplete. Well, and so, so I think we're all agreeing. It's well, not well, right. or, or, it or simply we disagree like with it. I mean, I, I see an enormous amount of. So let, let me change the paradigm. The I, say we have five, I think we have five more minutes for this conversation. I'll, I'll limit myself to 30 seconds. Uh, <clears throat> I see this in this way if your student handed you, to this, handed you this, and it was a rough draft, and you said, Here's my comments. Mm -hmm. C minus. <laughs> what would then happen? Uh, presuming it's a rough draft, they would incorporate those comments. Right. So that's so what I'm saying. To you, Wayne, myself. is C minus, and I want to <laughs> see <laughs> the next revision. <laughs> that that would be the way that I would. So the way I'm going to frame it, I think I'm going to say the same things others have been saying. Is that um, by by calling this a plan and by having everything but you know from, from broad goals down to very specific actions. It feels like it's supposed to be very comprehensive, and yet that's actually not the purpose of this. It's um, it, it, am I speaking properly? Right. Yeah. So, so and what I'm hearing is urgency timeline, areas of uh, you know areas to address, vision framework. That's the area that this commission should focus on, and it may be way maybe the specific actions, you know, really aren't that important because quite frankly they change as technology changes, as policies change, as laws change. Your potential actions change. They change. They change ra fairly rapidly. So what's important is where, which direction you push, push it. To, which where, where you set the priorities. If you know the mayor has made a, you know, a set a net zero goal of, uh, uh, for the city municipal facilities by 2050, maybe that needs to be 2030. But he's made that policy in house, and is now allowing capital improvements to pay for the energy studies it's going to take to do that. You know that's a very very concrete thing that helps um, uh, the community move forward. Um, uh, so if the, if the plan says something, it's still going to depend on the staff and, and people to actually implement something. Um, uh, you know, you, unless you can legislate, you know, some of you can legislate, you know, that, you know, at least your, your way of saying that. Um, so urgency, timeline, areas to address, that actually struck me pretty broadly. Is that something I'm actually wondering if we should go back and look at this plan with a different lens. Instead of kind of looking at the plan as a comprehensive plan that's going to be an end-all, be-all, should we go back and look at this plan as what is it as, an, you know, as a vision and framework, where is the urgency, where is the timeline, where are the areas that we should address, and come back with just that bigger view for us to discuss. 
I'm going to just put that out there. Because I think we've all been looking at it as something that it probably isn't meant to be. Right, it's never meant to be a conference plan. That's what right. the, And yet it looked, like, it looked like one, and the fact that you use the word plan in the title kind of gives you the impression that it is. Right, so there's, this is sort of inside baseball, but there's a difference between comprehensive plans and strategic plans. So it is a plan, but it's strategic, not, not comprehensive. Okay, strategic. Okay. But if this is strategic, then it means that it is our guidance. And so shouldn't we spend the time figuring out what our plan is? It does. We, that is our job, to provide guidance. Um, so I want to um, actually use the Pesticide Reduction Select Committee as an example of how we tackled, I mean, it's a smaller issue, but it was clear to me as a city councilor that we needed to figure out how to reduce pesticide use in the city. So we created a select committee. We created a committee that had a four month timeline to figure out what recommendations to make, including what, how we were gonna legislate around it. So we met you know, twice a week for a period of four months and we came up with a five person committee. We came up with a plan. Um, it includes it included a recommended piece of legislation that we're now um, putting together with the the bodies that are relevant to it. So the DPW, the um, the health department, and we're creating a piece of legislation that is going to effectively reduce the use of pesticides in the city. So that that's that's like a little a little nugget kind of plan that we can look to. If we were to imagine this. This commission, uh, Nest, had never heard it called that before. Um, <laughs> as our the goal, the raison d'être of this commission would be to have the city achieve carbon neutral status by 2030. And all that we did as a commission was figure out what that looks like. How do we put teeth to that as a goal? And we could have some subcommittees, and there are all kinds of open meeting laws issues that we would have to contend with if we needed to meet in small committees. But within, let's say, the next six months, and I think, I do think, I love everything that you guys did, but I think your timeline is way too short. There is no way in hell that you can do the depth of what needs to be done with this in a, essentially a one month period, or is it two months? from December to the end of January. Um, so I would, I would suggest taking a longer period of time. But to, to have, to create that roadmap and to identify which pieces in that roadmap are legislative pieces because legislative pieces do give you the teeth that none of the other stuff does. Yes, you know, we have an executive who can tell departments how to do things, but we can also, I mean, one of my big, kind of like signs that I'm holding as I'm exiting the council, it took me six years to realize that this was really important, is to have the legislative branch embrace its authority to actually mandate how policy is carried out in the city. And I think that um, having each, whether it be subcommittees, this entire commission, with that overarching goal of 2030, figure out which pieces we can legislate and we can mandate and working with the relevant departments and which are pieces that are recommendations to the mayor for the mayor to actually use his authority to get committees, uh, city departments to carry out. But again, I just want to go back to my initial comment, referencing myself, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm saying here, I, I think it's so important that within the next six months to a year, we have a roadmap of what we're gonna do. And I don't, again, I don't care if we call it the regeneration plan, if we call it the sustainability plan, but we need this roadmap like now, if we wanna do this by 2030. And so we need to make this commission's whole purpose, I think, being that. With that in mind, can I make a motion to move forward with what we presented, uh, minus the reference to the working group specifically? So basically stopping, uh, has it, but basically adopting all that strong intro language that we're all in agreement for, all the public comments are in agreement for. And this is saying that this is the NESC's position on this, that the document isn't, as presented, isn't strong enough, um, and continue all the way through to the reference, basically the first page, and then with a, a reference to something like what you just said about making a plan moving ahead. Um, 
for you know, an immediate action plan, getting the mayor involved and really stepping up maybe uh, or working groups probably isn't the right language to, to have in here. So when she made a motion, what, what, what you yeah, know, not being separate the, uh, thank the, you, thank the, you. the 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 decline portion? I would like to, before we end yeah. this meeting, have a motion that we can adopt this, maybe but without the reference just, to working groups. Yeah, like and then, and now just the final thing is that, and then you have a lot more comments now to integrate in this, right? That was what you asked for three months ago. So we gave you 10 pages of comments. And then take that and turn and turn it into a framework that you think isn't perfect, but hey, we hey, can adopt. I, you got to do the motion before we discuss. Yeah, so I, I can't do the motion. Yeah. I can't do the motion. So no motion. Okay. I would like to say, yeah, so, sorry, I'm not. I'm not there's, there's still so much here. I'm just trying to wrap this up. Hey, motion is first, basically your first page. Yeah. It, 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 where do you? Because I'll second the motion. Yeah. Just so we can discuss it, right. uh, uh, whatever the motion is. So I'll second it, but I haven't heard what the actual motion is. The first page. That we adopt that as. Adopt well. it as is, it's adopted in the plan or it's no. adopted by the committee? It's endorsed we, by the committee. It is the, it is the opinion of the commission. I second that on motion. The plan. <laughs> Correct. Let me comment if I can. I mean, Maybe oh, no. now this is, have, we, have we had a second? Yes, yeah, I so, seconded it. Okay. And so now it's open for discussion. Maybe this is what I might have a tone, which is I, I think you're sort of acting, I court in particular, as if this is a planning office plan. This isn't. This is supposed to be a plan from this committee. So it's almost a hands off thing. I mean, this committee, this plan doesn't go anywhere until you guys adopt it. That's, that's or endorse it. That was always the plan. That's why it came before you. That was the, the second slide in this thing. That's why I came before. So we're clearly saying we're not endorsing it. That's right. So we do know, right. But, but I think the language is sort of, frankly, unnecessarily argumentative. You're, you're not ready to go forward, so let's not go forward. But you're, it's written as if this is planned by somebody else well, that's out there. I you feel like you keep pushing for us to move it forward. I, I'm pushing for you guys to make a decision as to what we want the plan to be. And, and we don't really have that. What are the action steps that are in the intro? Because that's that's the most important piece to me about this vote that we're going to take. I, I believe that, in, in my opinion, what we should ask the city to do is to incorporate all of our comments and all of the comments of the public into this document. So, so that's not all of our comments and start working them in start working in the goals that are outlined by all of the public comments into this plan and bring it back to us when we have done so so that we can re-examine it and see if we want our are they, comments. Are we, are, what you're verbalizing now, is that in the introduction? I just no, no, reiterate for nope, the, no, the no, introduction I'm, I'm suggesting something on, that would be really Well, actually, we have to speak to the motion just to keep it yeah. in the order here. Right. We're not speaking. That's, that's off right. the motion. So we have to speak to the motion, which is uh, the that this commission votes to endorse the uh, the intent and express purpose of the introduction. And minus the last uh, uh, sentence. Could we characterize it as a preamble, potentially? Well, that that will have to come after this motion is voted on. So yeah, we can discuss how this is. How, what else you want to do with this? But we have to speak to the motion. We have to do conform to some form of, <laughs> of Robert's Rules of Order here. So, And if I'm correct, what I'm hearing is Wayne's comment back is that the front page isn't really giving direction. It's being it's just kind of setting an argumentative tone. I'm yeah. going to approve something that has action steps, yeah. and that's what I'm wondering. We had action page two, and that's what it is. Yeah, I'm trying to wrap my head around what, if we, if we got this plan down to a vision, with urgent language, what, how do we sort of proceed with turning this commission into one that is working toward carbon neutrality by 2030 and that has, um, you that's, know, active so again, again, that's a different issue from the motion, but the most salient point is actually the charge of this committee is already embedded in the establishment of the committee by mm -hmm. uh, under executive authority. So if we're going to change, if we're going to devote all our work towards that that which I don't I have any objection to but that remember the, the tie to Aiden's motion is that I'm not comfortable dropping the piece about the working groups without right. without yeah. understanding what our well, I, I feel like we're gonna leave here tonight without a clear yeah. sense of how we're proceeding I, we, we, there's sort of unanimous agreement this plan isn't good mm -hmm. enough 
but I'm really confused about how we're going to make it better, like the process for well, making let, it better. Let me make a suggestion if I yeah. could. I mean, this is sort of similar, again, thinking about what we work for the state of Northampton. I mean, I think the plan should be a vision, a framework, not deep in the weeds, and one of the key items is going to be a charge to this commission in terms of fleshing out specific courses of actions and figuring out who's who's required. And that's sort of your working groups, that's the process. Okay, going and I would say and this probably hasn't been talked about enough tonight, but it can't just be our commission that does that, right? Like and I think our comments and a lot of the public's comments talked about how like how we need to dedicate substantially more resources to the energy office or some newly named office to shepherd this plan forward, right? Yeah, I think I but I think I mean, to me, the only way the plan is going to be successful is if we're getting city resources across the city. It's not, so to really be successful, and that goes back to the carbon budget idea, right? So the way DPW gets involved with is DPW needs to figure out how do they get carbon neutral by 2030, whatever the, the time period is. And so they have to get a lot of resources across the city if they're doing it. But, um, yeah, but, but that's the, that is the sort of things we have to flesh out, is who are the players? You know, we have to identify what each of the active partners are in the process. And that's resources, that's departments, that's community boards, that's part, you know, part of your processes, who's who owns it. Wayne, I've got a question for you. So yeah. if, if we walked out of here without any motion, and you've heard this input and stuff, would you, what would you do with that? Would you go back and adjust the plan at this point? Well, I don't care about a motion, but I care right. about some sense that the board, I mean, the, the part I still haven't heard clearly is, do you all want to wait till we have sort of a more comprehensive element, that's the working group that's fleshing it out, or do we want to do this sort of more strategic plan and cut out the sort of deep in the weeds piece and focus on the vision and the framework piece? So, right? so, I haven't heard that clearly. So, so if you, you, would you accept like a motion that basically says to redraft the plan, you know, focusing on the urgency expressed here, that identifies a timeline expressed here, um, that outlines the large areas, the most important areas to address, and that identifies legislative um, uh, legislative pieces that might be put forward, and and, and just and make that the plan or you know, in that direction. So if I put forward that motion and we voted to approve that, would that help you? Yeah, that'd be great. Then come back. So, that so gives you a sense of which direction. Yeah. So that the, basically means you kind of get rid of a lot of the little out in the weed stuff. You're going to make a, a larger, larger piece, and we can really then focus on these frameworks and stuff. And and, and you've got a lot of comments to help feed in, into that. So well, I'm going to make that motion. Well, hang on a second. Okay. You have a motion. Oh, we have a motion on the table. Right. We have a motion on the table. So so in actually, I will withdraw my second so that we can move forward. But what I want, I do want to do, is I want to affirm the sentiments and the intent of this introduction and that's what I did by seconding yes. and hoping that we could take a vote as a as a group that we that hopefully the others share this sentiment and that so that we endorse this introductory statement to Ashley's concern about the working groups, it doesn't exclude the process. It's it, 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 the working groups are not eliminated. They, we're not rejecting that. We're accepting uh, as a committee the work that you're you're proposing, the the objectives and goals that you're proposing, the intent. We are we're proving that we are voting on assent or not. And if there are some members who disagree, then we. I would assume we would have heard it in debate. I'm very confused as to whether or not that motion will be. Well, we all have all that does, no, already have all, that, all that does back to this motion is to, oh, it, the, the, it to get the sense of endorsement by the committee. That's so why I was saying. I have the introduction. No, no, endorsing is your statement. I wasn't yeah. looking yeah. at the first endorse your statement. That, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, the piece, that's the piece that's, as it were, more than kind of a, a vision statement. Right is the last thing that's highlighted, which is NESC recommends against the CRRP's adoption and instead recommends a commission for a series of working groups to add rework and enhance several key pathways. So that's essentially what we would be endorsing mm -hmm. by voting yes on this motion and on I would be in favor of that. I, it doesn't get into the details of what, how long they will be meeting and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it's saying we're rejecting the plan as it stands, and that we endorse the idea of working groups moving forward to 
um, enhance the look at key pathways for action. And that's a very different direction than Chris and I would. Uh, so I just, that's the part I'm trying to understand. We have that a piece. motion on the floor. That we have okay, I just want to make sure we understand that. Are, we, are people ready to vote on uh, any more discussion? Because we're out of time. Is the motion for what Aiden suggested in this first page of this, or for it's what first, you the first bill then it? paraphrased? It's the first it's page. The well, you withdrew your second. Some I'll second. bring it back. I, I will bring it back. <laughs> I, I was I, I was concerned because we were getting stymied. Everyone wanted to debate something else, and I just wanted to um, back to the original motion. Um, I. Uh, I will second it and for the purposes of discussion I would say I actually don't want this to countermand what um, Chris is proposing because I actually agree with that and I don't want and the points of conflict I'd be interested in hearing where you, uh, you think yeah I mean I think it, if, if we pass this which is fine I don't have to object but it basically means I'm not doing anything to the working groups and, and I, and I, so that's a different direction than that's is it our that? desire to have whoever within the administration's job it is to take this plan and adjust it to reflect the comments of this committee and the public so that we can then review it again. So Gordon, that's basically what my what I was proposing, that's basically what I was proposing. Yeah, that was the spirit yeah, of yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think you were yeah. so I think we're that. asking. That's what we do. The that's point of this meeting yeah. is to that's, get That's one reason I asked you, do you need a motion for that? Or no, just go no, no that's you what we do here in Commons for the process. Okay. Yeah. Right. You don't, you don't, yeah. you don't, it is embedded in the, in the right. plan, in the plan okay. development. That's actually embedded in it. Okay. And so, you know, the purpose of my seconding, as I said, was to affirm and to express uh, accord with with uh, sentiment and intent of your introduction and the work that you did, and thereby get uh, it, in, it doesn't. All we're just determining is the committee's kumbaya. If you want. <laughs> but it, it sounds like we actually don't need that. We don't. Uh, the, I, I, it, it expresses the sentiment. Yeah, I, I, I would stand. I would stand. endorse. So the motion is out there. We're out of time. Going. I'm going to call for a vote. Okay. Okay. So basically, a vote on that first page. Uh, can I just yeah, make sure about this? Yes. I endorse <laughs> the intent and sentiment of the first page of the subgroup. So the, the introduction, Doug. Actually, if you just okay. Do that. The introduction. Of the introduction. It's listed as the introduction. So. Yeah, I'm really sorry, poor Doug. This is uh, yeah. This has been brutal. And so it's the introduction of the subgroup's recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, the subgroups. Uh, introduction. Introduction. They're narrative. Endorse the intent and sentiment of the introduction of the subgroups. Or, no. How about Say, the narrative of the subgroups introduction? Subgroups introduction. Just the subgroups. Yeah, there's no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Endorse that thing there. Of the, of the <laughs> subgroups. But not the working right. groups. Part. Right. Except for the working groups part. Uh, and if it's, it's, okay. it's, it's right in there. It's in yeah. the introduction. So uh, call the question, please. So it's this. Oh, so I'm calling the question that's calling for a vote. Yes, we're call it. Okay. Yes. Right. So shall we vote on that? We are going to vote on that. Um, and, um, and, and the way I read it, I'm going to say those parts. I'm going to still say, the, the sentiment of it does not mean necessarily that you are saying that you have to have a working group before Wayne does anything. Right. right. You're just basically know. saying the sentiment expressed here. Right. Not not the actions right. expressed. But and the sentiment expressed here. As you said, here. because in point of fact, that is the very nature of the structure of the process, that working groups and everything else is not precluded from any of that. And so the yeah, and nor is it precluded by this statement as I read it. And There's if you no want to be clear, there's no sentence in here that says okay. Wayne cannot continue. <laughs> 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 right. In that case, I would, I would, I would uh, ask for a friendly amendment to uh, have the introduction minus that last bolded sentence. Uh, no. Just for clarity. I think that's the, the whole reason why. Is no, that's the we're being purpose. Well, well, what well, well, we're hearing is saying we don't want to adopt it. No, you know what? If I may, if I may, if I may, I would, I would propose an amendment that. NESC recommends against the CRRP's adoption, no, 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 no. unamended adoption, 
as the of the draft document. No, because that gives you guys room to change it and then move forward. No, it's, 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 it's a draft it's document. Back it's, hard it's a draft document. So it's it's so and you can argue that. I mean, if you want, but I've been saying. It's a draft document. We don't. Again, I'm not painting people in the corners here. I don't want to do that. I want. To, I want this to work and move forward, not take 20 steps backwards. So, the NESC recommends against CRRP's adoption of the draft, or if you, uh, and instead recommends our commission form a series of working groups. Um, to add, and that's where we're agreed there. Rework and enhance several key pathways for action. But then it Which, does stop us moving. I yeah. guess that, that's the problem. If that language is there, we board. wouldn't move forward in the yeah. plan, right? I mean, that's well, sort of an addition to doing that separately. It's fine, but if it's if we're waiting for the working group for the plan, then we're not going to move forward in the working group. Have we considered? <laughs> uh, yeah, I I don't don't see what is prohibiting, making you feel prohibited from, uh, and I apologize for saying to you, uh, and lumping people together because of my own personal confusion as to who does what. Yeah, so uh, it instead recommends. The word it's, instead. So it's just the word instead. That, yeah, we encourage planning department to continue to there you go. Yeah. To incorporate the comments. And Thank you. I would accept and that's your amendment. So your amendment is very good. I'll second that. There you go. Yes. All right. Yeah. 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 Doug, yeah. Doug, yeah. Doug, yeah. Doug, yeah. Doug, 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 but you also get rid of the before, because otherwise you're saying, I mean, no that's really the key. You're saying do the working groups before we adopt the plan. No. Before it advances to the city council. Right. Yeah. yeah. Before it advances yeah. to the city council. Yeah. But then I wouldn't think work on to finish the work. No, but, but we need you to take, I, I feel, I feel that we need your department to take the next step. I, I'm fine, but if we're waiting for the working groups before it goes to city council, oh. we wouldn't do anything to the working groups now. What, can't you take the next step so that we have the next draft? Well, we have such an enormous amount of comments here. Well, Gordon, he can, and, and he's he already can. said he will. He can, and he's already said he but, will. But he not if the policy does not wait. He does not have a motion to do that. Right. But, so but they wouldn't do that if we're right. no, waiting wait for working groups. No, we are saying if you do this and you and you and you say that the working groups have to happen have to happen first, then his then he has to slow down. But we're not saying that. So, well, so let's just make sure the language says so and working groups, not instead yes. and not before. Yeah, yeah. I it's just and that there should be parallel processes in that. Well, be. here's the problem. Uh -huh. No plan can be adopted unless recommended by this committee. We are saying this committee will not recommend it uh, unless these conditions are met. So thereby, that's what precludes the adoption and moving forward and running on parallel tracks as, as okay. Council Plan said. And so my concern with the very specific language that you used is that when we say we, if, if we were to say that we do not approve this draft until it's changed and then you change it, then legally my concern would be that the argument could be made that since you made the changes that we said we needed that you would then have our no, 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 it's two years ago. It's still 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 no, still has to be adopted. Yeah, so okay, okay, so it's still okay. So, yeah. pardon me, I'm yeah. no, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was certainly when we yeah. started this thing two years ago. That was the piece. You guys are one of the authors okay. of the plan. So. So, so, do we have an amendment? What's the amendment? What's the amendment? If you do strike all the stuff in bold, that actually kind of solves that problem. In the last paragraph. Well, I feel like that detoots de this completely. If that's the kind no, of it doesn't. It, 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 the sentiment is here. I mean, the, the, the fact we say it right. The, you know, the increased um, uh, urgency, the increased, increased the, the faster timeline for CO two reduction. I mean, all that is huge to basically shift this. You know, to adopt that is that that's the sentiment. That's where we want to go. That's enormous. And, and actually, into A's point, and none of it has T. Yeah, NESC, any NESC encourages, um, and not against the adoption, but rec encourages our commission to form a series of working groups to add, rework, and enhance several pathways for action. And I think that's appropriate. That's the T. That's that's the T. That's that doesn't preclude two parallel paths. It doesn't, and. It, it, it doesn't kill 
It, we're not drowning the baby in the bath water. Yeah, we're not stopping any yeah. processes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, okay, should we pass that? Or did we well, let Doug catch up. <laughs> or Doug. <laughs> Do I have it right here? It's basically the introduction with the word recommends in the last that last sentence replaced with encourage. Encourage, but, and then delete against the CRRP's adoption and instead recommends. We can delete all that. So any it reads now reads NESC encourages or recommends the commission the NESC form a series of working groups to add rework and enhance several key pathways for action in uh, the CRRP before. Uh, I, I think you want to just drop that bold language because again, if you, if you want me to wait for those things, that we're waiting for those things. I think it was maybe a later step. Well, we're hanging on a second board. We're hanging on a second board. Right, and also, we're trying not to pin him down so he can keep going. Yeah. And so we can keep going. But, in, in, in fact, basically, as it is understood in this committee, that, that encouragement stands. And if, if, you know, establishing the working groups and all of that is all embedded currently now in our understanding of how we proceed. It also, hopefully, that when, when and if this comes to the council, the council, well, actually, probably by the time this hits the council, Councilor Klein won't be there, so you'll have to rely on me, a kind of a weak read, I'm sure, to, uh, to, to present it for you. But Councilor can, climb, can come as a citizen. Okay? <laughs> 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 so so, so clar clarify again, where does the motion stand? The motion, uh, that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> I, Aiden is the original proponent of the uh, of the article of the motion, so I, I would defer to. What Aiden. if we just drop, um, as you said, a series of working groups to add rework and enhance several key pathways, and then you know, for action the CRP. That's it. No before it advances. Just we're making the recommendation that we're doing that. Okay, so what is it? How would you read the amendment? So the first thing that Bill said. With you kept going until yeah. So the NESC recommends and then delete against CRRP's adoption and instead recommends. Say, yeah, and I would actually say in our commission, I would say add you know the NESCs form a series of working groups to address or to rework, not to rework, but to add whatever to add or to discuss. Of a, pr a process going forward. Okay, strengthen. Are we allowed to form? To strengthen. Those That's what we got to talk to the solicitor about. Okay. Right? Yeah, how do they, how okay. Do so, so, yeah. Started, you you started that with any SC recommendations against the CRRP adoption. Right. No. So we're we're striking. <laughs> yes. Just read off. What what would you like? Starting with the NEC recommends. Re and any any SC recommends uh, that. Uh, we form a series of working groups. I, As, uh, the NESC doesn't need to recommend to itself. It's right. just oh, okay. saying, NESC will form blah, 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 or will do this, something like that. Because the reason it's written like this is that it was a subgroup that actually wrote this as a recommendation. Right, but point. we're trying to say, if we're embracing this as our statement, it should be like the that. NESC yeah. will move forward by or whatever, something like that. Can, can I ask that? Uh, Sorry. Okay, so the NESC will uh, proceed with uh, a series of working groups to. Uh, wait, 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 wait. We'll proceed. Sorry. We'll proceed to form a series of working groups. Just will, but this means we keep proceeding. NESC will. A series of working groups. A series of working groups to add reward and then to open the pathways for action. Or does type four different versions. And period after action. Can we okay. also request? So what I've, what I've got is NESC will proceed uh, to form a series of working groups. No, if, there's if so, to advise by council, right? Rework and enhance several key pathways. For action. For action. Period. 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 Yeah. Right. And then stop the rest of the Yeah. yeah. Okay, yes. so what, which one do you include? I've got, I've got it right, I've got it right got there, and I, I can help you. Okay. Wayne, what are your next steps? Yeah, 
Go home and have Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Do you have to pay for the well, but before we next meeting, what's, we how is this agenda item going to be? Yeah. So, so um, we have a motion as amended um, uh, through the language that we just read on the, on the table. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All opposed. Good job. Good job. Good job. So, question. <laughs> the next step, I'm not sure when the next meeting is, so that it's better we could do it, is to revise the plan to slim down, you know, to focus on the important things, the vision, the, the, the timelines, the, um, all those things. When do we meet next? I'm trying to think when we can commit to how quickly. Second Thursday. What's that? Yeah, oh, the Thursday. Yeah, probably not in two weeks. Can we or push our meeting back? Well, I think I, it would be worth it. having that one to discuss the working groups. Between now yeah. and then, we can figure out the mechanics yeah, and I also think, of forming them, and then we can establish leadership it, for those groups. It's also useful to me to get input the long way. So you're not going to create a, you know, a final draft, yeah. but you know, maybe we can do a vision statement. I mean, we can play with that sort of thing so you can start giving feedback. That's right. So. But also, we're, we've just established two parallel tracks, so let's get going on that other track. Yeah. Amen. That's why I asked. Yeah. <laughs> when is the next date? Can so the next, the next uh, one well. would have been December 12th, because we're a little late, and I mean, that would basically be a little bit more than two weeks. Is that still? I think there's energy here to yeah, look forward. Yeah. 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 Momentum. I think we should <laughs> use that meeting to establish the working groups. Yeah. Yes. Between now and then, we can figure out the okay. we can talk legal the legal clarity and the, the mayor has to be involved. Yeah, you got That's a how. So what who? Right for Chris, Chris, is that something you? Yeah, that's true. Is Part that information you have access to, or? For what? Whether we could do it work groups to see if the mayor uh, yeah, right. subcommittees, specific think, committees based on these work that make these work I'll talk. I'll, I'll contact the city solicitor. And see um, well, there's yeah. a bit of a problem there. Oh, he's on vacation, isn't he? No, he's on, he's had surgery. He's in recovery oh, from yeah. surgery. He may he may he uh, write to him and he might be able to respond. He has been responding. So I don't know if he's on drugs, but. You can always do work in groups as long as you do post agendas and zoom in the same day. It's a public meeting. It's a question of what you describe. Okay. I don't think I definitely don't understand all those realities, so it's good to talk about that process. Yeah. The experience we had, we had um, somebody share the pesticide reduction committee that was not well versed in parliamentary and they're it's extraordinarily exacting like you have to you know within 48 hours and it's working hours not, not so, and we we ended up not being able to meet a couple times because the agenda didn't get in on time we didn't schedule a room you have to schedule a room where you can actually hopefully turn a camera on i mean there's a lot involved so the question i actually think that that's what we do for this meetings all the time we know we need to post to the solicitor though, because if you're having multiple groups and different people, you know, posting agendas, and I mean, it's com it is complicated. Um, one of the things to ask the solicitor is, is there a way in which we can create these groups so that they're not necessarily subject to meeting laws? Is there a way to form them? I don't know if that's possible, but if it if it isn't possible, we're going to have to do some pretty advanced training on how you actually can hold the meetings and make sure that you're complying with open meeting law. Make because it, it really response. is quite complicated. And to be honest, as serving as a commission, we're all, all supposed to be pretty well versed in that we're supposed to study and then it's sign off the yeah, yeah. of interest. Well, we're also, we're gonna, anyone, any citizen members that join these subcommittees How actually need to be sworn in too. So it's, it's not, Simple, and that's why I was. It just takes a lot of time, even to get everyone to get to the city clerk's office to get sworn in. What's going to happen takes, if there's a new bowl outbreak or something? What, what's the emergency? That's a, actually <laughs> then the board of health takes over. There are no laws. There are. <laughs> 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 Yeah. There you go. Have the board of health. It's an emergency. Have the board of health declare a health emergency. They they can actually make laws without it being elected. So. So the next, next agenda basically yeah. is going to be the working groups. Unless someone else has, I'm going to try to keep anything else to minor. Oh, elected chair. Actually, uh, no, um, 
the oh, process. Yeah, so the new administrative order that the mayor was presenting uh, relative to this committee, mixed body committees are called social transportation parking, where as he is calling for it, it hasn't been voted on yet, we haven't even had a hearing on it yet, but that uh, Chris would be the de facto chair of this nope. committee. Nope, that would, that would put me in, uh, in charge of my boss. So no, and your <laughs> boss, your boss is the vice chair, is, is according to the proposal. Well, let's, let's put it this way. The mayor's coming up with administrative order yeah. on, on, how to, on how to set up the chair, the vice chair, with the commissioner of this group. And then the city council is going to vote on it. So yeah. why don't we let so that this group and, uh, and yeah, this yeah. commission. Parking commission and other ones. Right. It's just, right. and so I think we just let that process play out and we'll find out who our chair is going to be. Can we uh, <laughs> be notified as the meantime, some basic group that chair. is inf influenced by that decision? I would well, you can get, there's a public hearing yep. at the next city council meeting that will be discussing this very issue. <laughs> if uh, the administrative order is approved, We've only got two meetings left. So if the administrative order is approved, it probably won't get final approval until the very last meeting of the year because we do one vote then. And one vote. Oh, that's right. No, we could do that. So we could do it that night. But that, uh, so the public hearing will be at 7 o'clock here in this chamber on uh, the city council meeting, which I couldn't tell you. December 5th. December 5th, that's right. Can, can you repeat that proposal bill? I didn't the mayor has an administrative order change proposing that uh, the structure of. Do we adjourn? Yeah, no, we didn't adjourn. We have to adjourn. <laughs> we do have to adjourn first, and I'll tell you in a second. I move that we adjourn. Here we go. Second. 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 Thank you. Bill, all in favor? Aye. Aye. No discussion. Thank you for all.